Hey folks, uh, I thought I'd give a prediction on the Tank Davis Ryan Garcia fight. A lot of people are doing it. We don't normally do this. We we'll wish fighters good luck and things like that. And when you give a prediction, uh, we're not worried about the fan base or anything like that. Really, we don't want to, we try to take care, unless it's Gerald McClellan, who did some horrible things to animals, uh, who is not having a good life right now, and I'm not really so sure deserves one, uh, for the evil that he had done in life, that not a lot of people don't know about, so... But other than him, uh, and anyone we find out in the future that's uh, torturing animals or anything like that, we'll be on them. But uh, so we don't like we kind of. But this fight's a little too big for that. So we're going to give a prediction. And uh, me and Joe have drifted a little apart on this. Uh, Joe, like, he, he's actually taking a shower now. We're fixing to hit some training, and he likes to take a good, cool shower before he trains. And, uh, of course, one after, but uh, he likes to take good, cool, cold showers before training. Anyway... Uh, but we've been drifting apart on this, but we're about on the same page now, looking at things and uh, doing some psychology of the sport. Uh, Joe, and I would think that he gets it from me, can sense by a tad of caution in another guy when to go dead on somebody. Uh, and you can sense the fear in another guy. And, of course, he gets nervous and scared, too. Everybody gets scared. If they tell you different, they're lying. But uh, he, he's real good at using that. And uh, so he and I both have a little bit, maybe, I don't know, of a gift at the psychology of it. And... We're thinking that Garcia, if he fights on the outside, is going to uh, win by knockout in the 8th to 10th round. That's what we're thinking. And, uh, of course, Tank is a more seasoned, more experienced boxer has a lot of tools, but we're just looking at size here, and size does play a huge factor in this thing, and we're also looking at speed, which both men have, but Garcia just has, he's fast, that boy's fast, and uh, he's like on another level fast, so we're thinking that that that's how, the way we're thinking this thing's going to play out. So, uh, and we're, I'm good at eating crow. I've ate so much crow that it kind of now tastes like chicken to me. So I, maybe I'm eating crow day after tomorrow on this thing, but we'll see. But one thing I did mention that I want to talk about is... Uh, I was told earlier, well, I'll go to there in a second. Here we go with an old man rambling back and forth. I believe that if this thing goes the distance, even if Tank is winning and clearly wins to our eyes, unless Tank has knocked him down and floored him three or four times to where it's just too beyond the judge's capacity for shenanigans and to finagle this thing, 
with their usual malarkey uh, and typical malarkey, uh, I believe if it goes the distance that even if Tank wins uh, pretty big, they'll give the decision to Garcia. Now, why would I not think that? Uh, that is what I'd ask you. Um, I would think that because they'll be wanting to set up a bigger money fight rematch. And this has happened so much in boxing, and it's a shame that I'd even have anything run across my mind, or some of you would have these things run across your mind, or that we would be going and looking at these uh, scorecards and just being total shocked. Almost every fight that we see, uh, almost every single one of them, and there's at least one judge way out there on the boundary that looks like they were watching another fight. Always, almost, almost always, almost every single fight. So anyway, I, I was on a boxing channel. I'm not going to name the guy, but he's in Sacramento, California. And he started out maybe about six or eight months ago getting online. And this guy knows a lot of insiders in boxing. And he gets on his rants and raves about, you know, particular fans and particular, uh, you know, judging being a mess. Uh, managerial teams being a mess and the corruption in the sport. But today he has a guy on, I'm not sure it might have been uh, uh, one of uh, the brothers. It might have been Oscar De La Hoya's brother. And I mentioned the fact that I felt like that if this thing went to a decision and Tank did win, they'd give the decision to Garcia. And here's what I was told. And it was very offensive, uh, very ignorant, and very wrong, and very blind. And it was very blind of the guy that has the social media to allow it to go on. And, I, and I'll state why. I now state what the guy said. We got on with this guy from the beginning, and Joe and I will comment back and forth with him. So every time he gets on and he does a live, because he doesn't have many people, has great guests but can't seem to get many people watching. Uh, I don't know why, and I hope that he gets a lot of people watching him. I don't wish the ugly on anybody. But... Uh, he has great guests on, and uh, but not many people are really watching the channel, but we do, and we watch it a lot because he has the great Boxing Insider guest on there. Uh, I didn't even hang around long enough to see who this clown was that was on here. Uh, but we always, we put comments down, and he always... Always puts the comments at the bottom, down at the bottom, if you know how YouTube Live and all that works. And I, I put a comment stating that if I thought if this thing went the distance, that they'd give the decision to Garcia to have that big money rematch. And they will do that. They've consistently shown that they will do that. And uh, now look, I've just picked Gar Garcia to win this thing. So, but I'm a realist here, and I'm not being a, just a fanboy here that they use that word fanboy. I'm just stating how I feel about it, and, and I've got a multitude of different reasons that there's not enough time here to mention. And I've already mentioned I'm good at eating crow and I eat so much of it, it tastes like chicken to me now. Uh, but I pick a lot of these things more of them right than I do wrong. <laughs> the vast majority of them I, I, I've been picking right. But anyway, because uh, and not because I'm so smart and such a genius. I do have a genius in the house, and it's our dog. 
who is Wiley Coyote off of the Bugs Bunny Roadrunner show. He's the genius Wiley Coyote. But that wouldn't be me. I'm not the genius. It's just watching this mass for over 50 years, you kind of get a feel for what you think is going to happen. So anyway, um, this guy comes on and he says, uh, there would never be anything like that happening. And I'll do respect, Joe Allen Boxing, you need to start learning to respect the process. And that was very offensive. Very, very offensive. Because Joe Allen does box. He gets his own backside in the ring. See, that was very disrespectful to anybody that will uh, get in the squared circle and box. Very offensive coming from a very awful person, a bad person, and that that guy allowed that guy to say something that false and not bite back on this guy and then just quit posting our comments because we didn't post anything ugly on there. As a matter of fact, the reply back to him was, in all due respect, boxing hasn't given anyone the reason to respect the judging process in a long time because there's always mishaps and corruption in this, in boxing judging. And there is. From the top level all the way down to uh, go, the Golden Gloves. Uh, I'm not saying that it's total, total corruption in every case. A lot of the times it's incompetence. But there's a lot of bad judging that goes on. You know it if you watch boxing, and I know it. And that was very, very offensive. And to the guy, if you watch this video, uh, I'm not going to name you. Joe named you on, on, on Twitter and politely unfollowed you and all these things uh, and and put a message that it was it was awful but not an offensive message to you i'm not i'm not even going to name you uh but i will tell you you love the sport let me tell you something put the wine glass down that you picture up with yourself Get out of the fancy dress suit and get your backside into a ring or get out there with these boxers and experience at least, if you won't get in the ring, at least experience, be around them enough to experience what they experience. But, but allowing people to come on your channel and tell boxers and fans to respect that messed up process is unbelievable. We just seen in that Zane uh, Joyce fight, and we're big Joe Joyce fans in this house. We love Joe Joyce in this house. But we seen where uh, one of the scorecards was overwhelmingly for Joyce. In that fight up until Joyce was stopped. So don't tell us. We don't want anybody telling us. To respect and honor. The judging process. When we know what we see is going on. That's like someone saying. To respect. Uh, the guy that's sitting in the White House. And can't even talk. Can't even put two words together and respect his son, and respect the processes that they they have been doing for years and that they are doing today. It, that don't work here. That don't work with us. And we're not going to put up with it. So you got to pick there. Uh, I really, I just, for a multitude of reasons, feel like and have from since they announced this, that Garcia was going to, 
if he had to get on the outside, play on the outside all the way through the fight, he's he can be Tank Davis late in this fight. Now, is that concretely going to happen? No. But I feel like it's a good possibility that it could. But I'm not a fortune teller. And many people that know a lot more about these things than I do are saying different. So if I were going to place a bet, I would go look at the, the Boxing Scholar channel or Punching Bag Skunk and see what uh, ghetto Greg Towns has to say over there about it. Uh, these guys are saying a little bit different, and they know a little bit more than I do. So I'd watch them before I place the bet. But I'm telling you what I think is going to transpire if Garcia keeps his distance from that left uh, of Tank Davis. It could easily happen. Now, will it happen? I don't know. But Garcia, if he fights on the outside and is sticking and moving, is just too tremendous of a size advantage and speed advantage that Garcia has where he can dictate what happens in this fight uh, if he plays it right. And I will say it again. I feel that uh, if it goes down to a decision, even if Tank is winning, they'll give the decision to Garcia. And when somebody comes and tells you, this is the Nevada uh, Athletic Association, the boxing, Nevada Boxing Commission, you need to trust in our process. Wow, boy, that, that's a big stretch because, boy, they do have the best people in the world and they call everything down the line and every referee that they allow uh, to get in the ring has shown to be perfect and all the judging in the state of Nevada has a plethora and a almost near 100% correct judging going on with these fights. Doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Nothing could be further from the truth. So uh, when we hear the crazy, we run from it and we block it. <laughs> and uh, you may hear, be hearing some crazy from this because most of you are not giving Garcia a chance. And I understand that. And I'm not blasting you. And that's not crazy what you're thinking. Uh, but when you hear crazy like, you're insane for questioning uh, the, uh, the, the establishment. Uh, that's when we run. Because you should always be questioning the establishment. And any young guy in boxing, I tell Joe, uh, even at the lower 14-year-old intermediate amateur level at 14 years old, Joe, don't ever let nothing rely on these judges because you can't trust them. And anyone telling you to judge in that process is naive, ignorant, or just corrupt themselves something's going on but it's and it's nothing good what's going on with somebody that tells you to trust the nevada athletic state athletic commission or new york state or florida or uh, north carolina or idaho even. uh don't put your trust in that young people don't do it you think about it i always tell you young guys you can think about it, but don't do it. And don't, because you'll be making a mistake trusting in almost per near any of establishment in any aspect of life uh, is not healthy for you. So Christ's blessings on people. Much love to you. Uh, the water just cut off, so I know Joe's going to get into this training. He's going to... It's Friday, so he's probably going to pull about two and a half hours uh, this evening. And uh, so I'm going to get myself ready and prepared to be able to stand around him and <laughs> while he's doing it. So God blessings to everybody. 
uh, peace to you and uh, chase wisdom, bend discernment, questioning things, get away from the evil that you can and run to the good people because there are many good people in this world and uh, the problem is is that the good people are not voicing the evil out and we need to start voicing it we need to start pointing at it and identifying it and we need to get on the side of goodness and never stand on the side with any of the evil and remember the good people are in the majority. They're just silent. So that's our take on the fight with a rant and rave, which is usual around here. And love to everybody.